All right, uh, I wanted to start doing a lot of experiments with these uh, homopolar motors that uh, basically use the same uh, principle that Faraday had observed a long time ago with his uh, Faraday disc generator. And um, a lot of people uh, on YouTube have, have made a lot of these little variations of motors, basically just taking like a uh, some neodymium magnets, putting them to a double A battery, and making you know a, a little uh, rotor here with the uh, with copper wire and such. And uh, before I start uh, getting into a lot of experiments with this, I just wanted to make a couple so. Here's just uh, yet a couple more of many that are already out there. But I, I have noticed that while this is a, uh, a pretty easy experiment that anybody should be able to do to see the effect, um, it turned out to be a little harder than, than, it, than it seems. Um, I know some people still have trouble getting it to work, but you have to play with it. But I've made a few so far. You can see one over here. It's just double A battery with a stack of some small uh, Neo cylinders. They're very small, smaller than what most people would use, but they still work. And I've got a, a, a big heavier gauge uh, wire here. It's 12 gauge. And it's solid as opposed to this little one over here. I'm not sure what that is. That's probably more like um, 18. And um, same deal, but it's only got a couple of little neo uh, cylinders under there. But uh, like with this one, you can make them where you see at the bottom. I kind of have have it cradled, I have it cradled in such a way where it won't come off. You can do that, and that works. Uh, of course, the problem there is just that uh, as it maintains constant contact. Um, you're dead shorting the battery, so of course, you know, this this type of arrangement, your battery's not going to last long. I, I'd be surprised if it runs maybe 10, 20 minutes. And, uh, this, like, this little setup here, what I prefer to do is have it so the, uh, the wire is so loose with the, with the magnets that it's barely touching. Like, the reason that works, I guess, is just because these magnets are, uh, conductively coated, so they make contact. And uh, you can see when I put it on, it wants to start spinning. Now, what's interesting about these is, of course, if I reverse the polarity of the uh, battery, if I flip it over, it's going to spin the other way. But it does the same thing when I redo when I flip the magnets. If I was to flip the magnets but leave the uh, polarity the same from the battery, then it'll spin the other way also. But like with a little design like this, I think it's cool because. Uh, if you if you leave enough slack there where it just kind of bounces around you're not dead shorting the battery a hundred percent of the time so it's liable to last a lot longer but uh... this thing right here like it'll it'll eventually get up to speed which is pretty cool it starts going pretty fast after a while it just bounces around just right where it picks up speed like this one right here just a little smaller version but that, that one's actually uh... cradled entirely around the magnets that battery's pretty dead, so it's going pretty slow right now, but, you know, you can see the same effect. This one over here is starting to go faster. Really starts picking up speed. It's moving. It's, it's moving that uh, piece of 12 gauge wire pretty damn good. Now, this one over here doesn't want to work so good. Now, just you can see, just from example, uh, it's not. It doesn't always want to work. You know, sometimes the, sometimes your uh, contact isn't hitting just right, or sometimes there's just just enough friction to keep it from going. That happens a lot. Uh, I, there's a lot of versions out there where they kind of make spirals and cradle the battery in such a way to keep it fixed but I've just noticed that every every little bit of friction keeps it from wanting to work see this one over here is having a hard time again usually wants to work this one right here is steady going
but I would encourage um, everybody to research how this works. Um, read about Tesla. Read about Faraday. Uh, read about the uh, read about the end machine. There's a lot of information out there on that. Uh, Bruce De Palma. But you know, basically, what you see is we have a DC circuit where with the use of uh, a magnetic field and the uh, magnetic field created across the wire as the current flows it's creating a rotating it's, it's creating a rotating field it's almost like a vortex and this isn't supposed to happen with DC that's why there was such a big deal about it but clearly it, it works. This is more of like a pulse system. It's not 100% shorted all the time because there's, there's, there's moments in time where it doesn't make contact. But of course, in a normal electromagnetic situation, the, uh, the field does not. The field stays stationary. When you energize uh, a coil opposing a permanent magnet, um, the field coming from the coil uh, is stationary as long as the coil is stationary. In this situation, the uh, wire wants to move on its own. The wire coming from the magnetic field at that 90 degrees is, is causing like some of this vortex type thing. And I guess electron electrons explain that, uh, but everyone can have their own theory. Now this obviously would not be a very efficient motor, this as it is. The Faraday disc was, was fairly inefficient, but uh, the point is to just learn about what's going on and try to figure it out. Because, for example, the end machine had claimed up to, uh, from what I remember, things like 500% output and such like that. Things like the ball bearing motor, very interesting stuff. But what I would do is uh, for for something like this, which is like a pretty cool tool, I would just go get some uh, some Neo cylinder magnets. Like that. Now the battery is already hot because it's just shorting itself. But see, I just have a little stack of stack of magnets. You don't need that many. I just did. I just used those because I had them. And, uh, make something shaped like this. It could actually be a solid piece where it's all connected. And rather than, uh, try to cradle the magnets, you just kind of set it on, lean it to one side like this. And that'll work too. So, there's a lot, of, a lot of different ways you can do it, but uh, I've seen some really cool ones out there. But yeah, I encourage uh, people to experiment on it.